Welcome to my video. Today we're going to look at how Tesla can make the Tesla bot for under $10,000. And CERN Basher put together this photo for us that basically took Scott Walter's ideas and made it visually appealing. Now, before we get into it, just some background on the man who created these estimates. Scott Walter, he's an expert on robotics. I've had the pleasure of interviewing him on my channel. He's a mechanical and aerospace engineer, a factory simulation expert, and these are his ideas. Make sure you follow him on X, as well as CERN Basher, the man who compiled all of this information for us. Now, Scott estimates that the cost to make a bot will be under $10,000, or about 28% of a Model 3's cost. Scott is not suggesting that's what bots will cost to make this year, but over time as production scales up. So let's take a closer look. The Model 3 is about 4,000 pounds, and the battery pack of the Model 3 makes up about 25% of its weight. Similarly, Optimus Bot's battery pack makes up 25% of its weight. I thought that was pretty interesting, but what's more interesting is how much lighter Optimus is going to be than the Model 3. This is a big reason that it's not going to cost nearly as much. Just $480 for the sensors, $500 for the hardware for computer, $600 for the cameras. I tried to find out how many cameras are going to be in Optimus Bot, but that information is not available to us yet. On a Model 3, there are 8 cameras to run FSD. But I don't expect Optimus to actually require as many cameras as a Model 3 does. A human only needs two cameras, and the design of Optimus is inspired by humans, so we'll see if Tesla decides to give Optimus more than two cameras. With that being said, Scott allocating $600 for the cameras in Optimus could be because these are going to be really high quality fisheye style cameras that can see a wide range just like our human eyes can. Or it could just be that he is being conservative and the number could just come in well below 600. I would be surprised if it does though because you're going to want some really high quality cameras on Optimus which is depending on this vision based system to operate. Scott is estimating that the actuators are going to cost $3,600. Of course, the humanoid robot industry is brand new. There is not a bunch of suppliers currently making actuators that Tesla can buy off of the shelf. This means that Tesla has to custom design their actuators, build them in-house. Now, Tesla's first generation Optimus bot had 40 custom designed actuators on the body. We haven't been told exactly how many actuators are on the second gen Optimus bot. I know they added an actuator into the neck, but I do not have the specific number. But if we take how many actuators were on the first generation bot 40 and divide it by $3,600, that means it was about $90 per actuator. This is of course speculation based on Scott's estimate here, but that is a very impressive number. And we know that Tesla went over thousands of actuator designs trying to find a design for an actuator that fits in multiple different locations in Optimus's body. This is just one of the ways they were able to save cost. And remember, these estimates that Scott is making is predicting how much these things are going to cost once Optimus is fully ramped. This is not about today. Scott is estimating $300 for the castings. Now, this sounds very, very cheap, and we haven't gotten confirmation of this yet. But when the second gen robot came out, Tesla was able to reduce 10 kilograms of weight off of the first generation. And as we took a closer look at the second gen bot, it looked like they had moved from metal to kind of a hard plastic body. So I think Scott here got $300 for castings, assuming that it's going to be much cheaper and simpler to cast this hard plastic body than it would have been for using a metal material. So those are some of my thoughts on Scott's estimates. But now let's move into some of CERN's thoughts on manufacturing limitations. The first is battery production. He writes, if production of bots were to ramp up in the near term, then batteries could be a constraint. It's not until 2035 until my illustration has the industry deploying 200 million bots per year. This would soak up 30 billion 2170 batteries, roughly the same as the production of 10 million electric vehicles. By then, I doubt that battery production will be a major issue. Also, since bots will likely be more profitable than selling EVs, batteries would be prioritized for bots. Additionally, since autonomous vehicles will see high utilization, we don't need to make as many vehicles as we do today, potentially freeing up batteries for bots. 
The second manufacturing limitation CERN goes over is actuators, which I have already talked about. There's not an existing chain of suppliers making actuators, but that doesn't mean that one won't spool up over the next decade to meet the demand. So there's a great business idea for you. Annual production of 250 million bots will need more than 10 billion actuators. So go start your company, guys. So great, these bots are going to be cheap to manufacture. But when are they going to do useful work? Well, Scott says sooner than you think. But first, let's define what useful work is. A bot has done useful work when it can do a task performed by a human at the same efficiency, reliability, quality, and endurance at or below cost parity with the human wage. Whatever the task is does not matter so long as it is any task currently required in the factory or business. The outcome must be the same in quality and reliability, else there is no advantage to using the bot. Efficiency is important for cost parity as it must not compromise the current production rate or the process. If a human is way faster than a bot, it's not going to make sense to switch to a bot. Endurance is extremely important as well. It must be able to perform over an entire shift without failures or glitches and show up the next day or shift without problem. Proving it can do a task reliably for 10 to 20 minutes does not cut it. An entire shift is required. It can use the same break schedule as humans if mid-shift charging is necessary, but that is all. It needs the durability and reliability to do repeated shifts without interventions. Shifts are marathons, not sprints. Cost parity is when the operational cost of the bot is at or below the human wage, including overhead. It's that simple. Once it becomes cheaper to use the bot, and it is dependable, the bot has done useful work. When that happens, scaling will begin in earnest. So how many bots will Tesla and the rest of the bot industry be able to produce annually? Well, CERN says the short answer is more than 10 million per year, and perhaps eventually about a quarter billion per year. Let's think about it like this. The largest automakers make 10 million vehicles a year. The auto industry makes about 70 million per year. 70 million vehicles is equivalent to two and a half billion robots in terms of weight. Let's look at the smartphone industry. The smartphone industry sells about 1.3 billion devices per year. And in terms of weight, 1.3 billion smartphones is only about 13 million bots. So it appears that the key issue isn't the weight of the product, but rather the size of the market opportunity. The smartphone makers could make more than 1.3 billion phones per year if the demand was there. With humanoid bots then, the key to unlock massive demand is the capability of the bot. As a bot becomes more and more capable, it unlocks more and more of the labor market. Also, the bot becomes more valuable and should command a higher price. As the market expands, the bot makers will expand production capacity to meet the demand. So here's a chart that CERNBasher made for us that forecasts some of the coming growth. Of course, these are estimates, so just take them as pure speculation. If we look at 2030, CERN is predicting that 5 million bots have been deployed and that their hourly rate of work is only $12 an hour. He is forecasting that in 2030, bots will already be producing $420 billion in revenue. It's starting to feel like 2030 is right around the corner, but 2030 is still six years away. $420 billion in revenue from humanoid bots is still not out of the question. From there, CERN expects rapid growth. Companies stumbling over each other to produce as many humanoid robots as possible, growing to 1.5 billion robots deployed by 2040. By that time, he expects a company to be able to hire a humanoid robot for as little as $3 an hour. One and a half billion bots at $3 an hour, CERN gets $31 trillion in industry revenue. This would make the entire humanoid robot industry worth $567 trillion in 2040. To put this into context, the current market value of global stocks today is only a bit more than $100 trillion. And Scott Walter called CERN's predictions conservative and realistic. Let that sink in. For me personally, I'm not going to call these numbers conservative or realistic. $567 trillion market cap in 2040, that's only 16 years from now. And if Tesla even claimed 20% of the humanoid robot market, that means Tesla's valuation would be well over $100 trillion in 2040. But I'm not going to sit here either and tell you that this is impossible. 
I think what really helps me grasp this chart is if you look at it year by year. Okay, this year, Tesla makes 10 humanoid robots. In 2025, Tesla produces 100 robots. 2026, 10,000. Okay, I can, I can believe that. 2027, 100,000. You know, they 10x production. That's three years from now. You know what? Yeah, that could happen. 2028, 600,000. I'm believing it all the way down. The area that it starts to get a little bit nutty is once you start to get to the quarter billion per year. Will the battery cell supply be there? Will the bot actually be able to displace human labor, do the really hard jobs like cleaning gutters, getting on ladders, chopping lumber, fishing? I don't know. There's so many examples. But whether you want to call this chart completely outlandish and unfeasible or whether you're thinking, wow, this is an absolute certainty, you can't deny that the humanoid bot is definitely Tesla's biggest opportunity right now. And no matter how many jobs the humanoid bot is able to displace, if Tesla can make it for under $10,000, this is without a doubt going to be a very profitable endeavor. So if you're new to the channel, subscribe to the channel. And if you're a consistent viewer, you know my voice, you listen to me every day, well, tell me how you really feel about all this in the comments. I like reading what you guys say sometimes. Not all the time, but most of the time. So. I'll talk to you tomorrow.